The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. It's Fed Day, folks, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll get an announcement. Tapering expected to the tune of about $15 billion a month from the $120 billion that the Fed is doing right now. Rates expected to stay the same. With that, we start things off right near all-time highs made yesterday almost across the board. You look at where we were, 46.27 in the S&Ps. We're trading right now negative by five points in the session at 46.18. We've got some big companies moving uh, with earnings in a big way overnight. NASDAQ higher. We almost make 16,000 overnight. Taking a look at the daily, quite an acceleration. I mean, talk about, remember the woes of September? You just back things up to the run that the NASDAQ 100 had since May. We trade up to a high in early September, about 15,708. We're about 300 points above that level, folks. We're 2% above all-time highs in the NASDAQ, let alone we traded down to a price point of 14367 Folks, you're up like 10 11% in the NASDAQ 100 over a period of just under a month. October 4th was the low. We're dealing with November 3rd right now. Remarkable. Jumping back to the Dow. Dow, 35,971. That's a high yesterday. I think we got 36,000 potentially on the cash at the time. And the Russell just off the all-time highs. I mean, look at that. We're about 10 points away from all-time highs made back in March. March 15th was the high in the futures of 2366. We've been in quite a consolidation in the Russell for the better part of about nine months. The Russell pushing the upper boundaries of that consolidation area, pushing all-time highs as well. Uh, there's a good possibility we could get all-time highs on all four markets today with the Russell just 10 points away for the first time in seven to eight months. Bitcoin backing off a bit. We reached 67,000 a couple weeks ago. We're currently trading at 62,860. There's your daily on Bitcoin. We got crude trading lower today. A little bit of a pullback. We'll get into that in a moment. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com at 40 past the hour. We'll talk to Teddy about some Forex. We'll talk to him about some commodities. We'll talk to him about that crude market as well. Gold contracts backing off a bit. Gold dropping. We got ADP numbers this morning. We have some other economic numbers. Gold dropping from 1786 to 1774. You're negative about 14 bucks on the session right now. Silver's down 13 pennies. You see a little bit of a sell-off there as well. Uh, private payrolls with a big beat in terms of 571,000. We'll get into that number in a moment as well. Notes and bonds, flat action ahead of Fed Day. You're talking about a 10-year right now. Excuse me, 1.54%, 1.544 to be exact, 1.54%. The yield on the 10-year, we got the 30-year up 11 ticks at 161.04. A little bit of a divergence, whether you're talking about the 2-year, 5-year, 10-year, 30-year, et cetera, as those curves. Uh, there's your action on the 10-year. You put it back on a daily. You put this thing back on a 5-year weekly for some context. We make it to a high of 140.24. That was the COVID lows of the market. We'll call it March of last year. Uh, you see the pullback here. We've been within a trend. Uh, lower prices in terms of higher yields. And interesting, when we have Fed Day going on right now, the 10-year flat, possibly awaiting that 2 p.m. Eastern Time announcement. And we'll jump over to the volatility index, 1617, currently in that VIX right now. All right, let's start it off with Fed Day. Fed to taper bonds and show patience on rates. That's the expectation. Federal Reserve is widely expected to announce the reduction of asset purchases at the conclusion of its policy meeting Wednesday. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll have a press conference with Chairman Powell at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, this is all about expectations in this article. We find out the reality at 2 p.m. today, but Chairman Powell will likely say it's not a step toward raising interest rates anytime soon, as in they're going to um, reduce asset purchases, but he said many times that that does not mean that we are near rising rates. There's a big difference in his mind in terms of reducing the asset purchases versus what it will take where they actually need to start rise, raising the interest rate. Uh, FOMC is all but certain to hold rates near zero after the two-day meeting and announce a $15 billion monthly reduction in bond buying from the current $120 billion. That'll put it 
on about an eight month pace to do away with the entire $120 billion monthly purchase that they have going on. They're gonna taper that, they're gonna do it in about eight months, Eight months at $15 billion, that gets you to zero on that program. Uh, that comes out at 2 p.m. today. Like it or not, hikes are priced in. Number of hikes priced in. You look at what we're talking about here, uh, whether you roll out to next year, right? You see the rise in a pretty dramatic fashion. Uh, February 2023, folks, that is not that far away, just to put things in context. Yes, it's 2023. Within two months, it's going to be 2022, and within February of 2023, you're talking about 2.5 rate hikes priced in. You can see where we get. You get into November, and we're pushing 1.7 rate hikes. I mean, what's going to happen? Are we going to see two rate hikes next year? That's kind of the conversation going on right now. Vast majority, vast majority of economists in the Bloomberg survey expect the Fed to reduce its monthly purchase to the Treasuries by 10 billion and mortgage-backed securities by five. That equals the 15. Wrap up the process by the middle of 2022. Uh, FOMC is likely to include a caveat that it could speed up or slow down the taper in response to economic developments. That's pretty standard language from the Fed, right? Saying that uh, nothing's locked in stone usually, depending on how the economy reacts, especially right now. Um, and yeah, he's going to separate the tapering decision from the rising rates. It'd be interesting to see how he walks that one in a big way. Uh, but that Fed out at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. All right, with that in mind, let's jump to some of the stocks that are moving on earnings this morning. We'll start it off with a meme stock, Bed Bath & Beyond, Stock surge revives retail trader mania. Talk about some short squeezes going on. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, we'll pull up the chart first. BBBY is their symbol. And there's your volatility on their uh, spike from 16 and change to 32 last night. You're trading at 26. 55% uh, the day after releasing plans to help its turnaround. The advanced triggered gains in the original meme stock like AMC. Excuse me. Now, this had a huge short squeeze as well. I wonder if they have the number in here. Uh, I don't see the short squeeze number, but it was a big one. Uh, and surprising that people are still getting caught a little bit short in terms of these stocks. Nonetheless, you got Bed Bath & Beyond skyrocketing to $26.67. You were at $16 and change last night. Quite the run. Now, on the flip side of that, you got Zillow. And the pain is just not stopping. Pretty harsh. Uh, Stuff coming out on their earnings last night. Now, you had already traded from 104 this week down to 74 today. You had already traded down to 87. You already given back dramatic gains in this stock. Let's put it on a three-year weekly for some context here. Talk about getting ahead of itself up to 208. You're going to open today at 73, folks, 73. You came into COVID at 67. Think about what the market has done over the last year and nine months and you have Zillow barely positive from from a price point of 67 in the week of February 17th. Now, they come out with earnings that disappointed, uh, I imagine disappointed. That's kind of when the market fell off as well. You see the cascade at $20. But you came into 2020 at 50 bucks, and you're going to be at 73 With everything that's going on in the real estate market, it seems like they should have been able to better capitalize on that acceleration. But, man, they have not. And guess what, folks? Zillow, where are we? It's closing its home buying business, cutting 25% of the workforce, and earnings miss estimates. We'll chat about this a little bit more after the break. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Well, welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by five points right now, right near the all-time highs we made yesterday. NASDAQ 100 positive by about 22. The Dow negative by 71. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the TD Ameritrade Network, walking you through the market action, talking about hypothetical trade setups. It's earnings season. Got a bunch of economic indicators out this morning, and it's Fed Day on top of it all. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, today's a big day, that's for sure. You know, I think this market will um, you know, keep its powder dry during the day because, you know, let's face it, what Jerome Powell's about to lay out is pretty historic in terms of tapering away from asset purchases. So it should be kind of a slow day up until – you know, 1.30 uh, Chicago time, 2.30 Eastern. And then I, I think things will get a little hectic after that, Tommy. Yeah, pretty cool. So the expectations, and it almost seems like everybody has it figured out to certainty. And Chairman Powell's given pretty bold, uh, strong indications of what was coming down the line, maybe in terms of those asset, uh, the tapering of the asset purchases. Uh, seems like the expectation is maybe it's going to take about eight months. So they take off $15 billion. They're doing $120 billion right now. Maybe it takes eight months or so to eliminate that. Uh, a lot of people looking for the conversation in terms of how he's going to walk the line, Kevin, between saying the economy is well enough off that we do not need the Fed to be purchasing these assets. Yet, we're not even close to where we're going to be, where we need to be, to raise interest rates. How do you see him kind of walking that line as he has pretty well over the last year and a half or so? Um, but that's going to be a fine line as we move forward, Kevin, as he tries to argue that the economy and the market doesn't need the Fed in this one role, but we still need the Fed in the low interest rates. And we got a strong ADP number this morning for private payrolls ahead of Friday. I'm sure he might get asked about that as well. Yeah, I think you just touched on what I think will be one of the key messages from today, which will be differentiating between stopping asset purchases and raising rates. I think he'll make a clear uh, difference between the two. One doesn't lead to the other. And there is, the, I mean, I think he'll talk about that there's no imminent plans to raise interest rates, right? If you think about it, they're tapering from, as he stated, into the middle of next year. Well, that implies right there that we're not raising rates during that period. So, I think that's what he'll make crystal clear today is don't connect the dots between 
reducing asset purchases and raising interest rates because, uh, you know, he'll make that very clear. But, you know, he's got good data today to talk about. He'll, you know, we'll see what the data is on Friday. But today's going to be interesting, Tommy, for sure. So speaking of interesting, Kevin, we got some stocks that are moving in a big way. We got some earnings, man. Uh, one of the original meme stocks uh, itself, Best ba uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, excuse me, uh, up almost 100% out of the gate last night, Kevin. They're up like $10 this morning. Uh, some of these companies, it doesn't stop. And I'm just going to jump to Zillow uh, and get your take a little bit on Zillow, man. They had earnings last night. And pretty remarkable in terms of, I guess, the algorithms not quite working out at Zillow, man, as they're cutting that whole program for instant buying across the board. Uh, this stock, man, I just pulled it up, Kevin. It was up to 208 pre uh, earlier this year. We're going to open it about 73 this morning. Really remarkable in that housing market, how strong it's been that Zillow kind of faltered in such a big way there. Well, I think Zillow, you know, we, we covered it yesterday on Fast Market. And, you know, yeah, this is a pretty big unforced error on their part. Not only that they admit that they didn't do it well, but co to completely exit is more than most people expected. They expected a pause, maybe retool yeah. and figure out what sure. they did wrong, but they're exiting the house purchases. And now they've got 7,000 homes to sell to raise $2.8 billion. Do the math, that's about 400000 per house. So Crazy. I yeah, heard you they, say that they, on the program problem, yesterday. And that should weigh on the stock, Tommy. I agree. I heard you say that yesterday, and I hadn't even done the math. And I said, my goodness, we had 400 grand a pop. They got they got some uh, hefty, hefty price tag houses on the balance sheet, man. And, you know, the one thing you can say is at least uh, they see the writing on the wall, man. You cut your losses, you move on, right? As opposed to trying to save a program that just is not working. Because if it's not working in this market over the last you know, two years or so since they've been doing it. How's it going to work when the market might stay the same or even move lower? A lot of issues they probably weren't imagining when they did that, though, Kevin, in terms of supply problems. They yeah. can't hire, you know, workers to, to fix the houses up, et cetera. That housing market, it's not as simple as just buying a product, selling a product, et cetera. Uh, with that in mind, so we know it's Fed Day. I'm sure we'll have a discussion on your program about that to some degree. But, man, we march on in earnings season. Uh, what are you guys going to be talking about on the program today, Kevin? Yeah, our first segment, we'll talk about Roku, and then, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on Etsy, and then we'll trade Qualcomm in the final yes. segment of the show. So three really good names to look at today with really three different stories, frankly. So, yeah, great show planned for today. A lot of good back-and-forth discussion. I love it, man. And Roku, I was looking at this one yesterday. Talk about a double top, Kevin, this year. At about Almost 500 bucks. Almost made it twice in February. Almost made it back up there in July. I have a little Roku in my retirement account, man, long term. We got like four or five Rokus in my house, Kevin. Uh, but that stock, like many, got a little bit ahead of itself in terms of the earnings multiple. We're back to 315 from 490 earlier in the year. And like you said, Etsy, Qualcomm, they keep coming this week, man, uh, in a big way. Kevin, we appreciate the conversation. As always, man, we look forward to the show at 12 noon today. We'll be watching. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, tune in 12 noon, 12 noon Eastern time today. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, going to be an outstanding program. You heard it. They're going to be talking Roku, Etsy, Qualcomm. We got a bunch of earnings jumping into it, and we're going to jump to the next one right away. Right away. Uh, CVS, out with their numbers, pulling it up, up about two bucks. I saw, yeah, up about two bucks. CVS up to ninety three fifty, jumping back to their numbers. CVS Health, as they like to be called, uh, earnings gets a lift from COVID vaccines and prescription volumes. Drugstore chain raised its forecast for the year. Adjusted earnings seven ninety to eight bucks. That's up slightly from seven seventy to eight. 8.5 million COVID tests, 11.6 million shots during the three month period. You get into the numbers, a buck 97 versus a buck 78. And how about the revenue on this one, man? 73.7 billion versus 70.5. Folks, that is $3.3 .3 billion extra revenue in 90 days. It's almost, almost, uh, un I, like your brain can't process the numbers you deal with, folks. $3.3 billion extra revenue in 90 days. Percentage-wise, yeah, that's less than a 5% bump in the revenue than they were expecting. All right, but third quarter net income, $1.59 billion, uh, or buck twenty a share. I don't know why that's saying down from. That would be up from $1.22 billion, or $0.93 cents a share a year earlier, excluding items $1.97. Uh, big numbers for them. We went over the numbers in terms of what they're getting, uh, in terms of 
tests and vaccinations. Uh, yeah, CVS trading higher. Taking a look at a little longer term chart on CVS. We're going to open at about 93. You see the acceleration. We kick off this year at 75. We kicked off 2020 at almost 75 bucks as well. You back things up a little bit further. There's your five year weekly, and we'll take a look at the monthly, folks. 113 it was back to in 2015. We're going to open about 93 bucks today. Um, but all things considered, quite a turnaround. The lows of November. CVS trading higher in a big way. All right, folks, stay tuned. That's quite a monthly S&P chart, right, folks? Folks, when you look at this market, okay, I didn't even plan on it, but take a look at this monthly. Since 2008, it's been a one-way trip, folks. That's 13 years ago. Yeah, you had to weather a couple pullbacks there, but really? You're talking about from 676 bucks to 46.18 in 13 years. Be careful out there. Have those stops in. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We get the S&Ps negative by six, jumping over to some of the stocks with action last night. See how they're opening. Zillow getting a slight bid. Still down 13.2%, man. You could go back. You're down 25% from where we were to start the week. Think about that. Down 25%. And I'm not even counting this acceleration you got at the end of Friday. We ended last week at about 100. We started off this week at about 100. We're trading at 75 bucks. That's an easy 25% math down. Kathy Wood, she's doubling down. Uh, on Zillow yesterday. 288,000 shares purchased on Tuesday. Now, the tough part, reading articles, before even Kathy Wood 
uh, really accelerated higher in her ARK Innovation uh, ETF based in coming St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, before it really, you know, she became the superstar she is now, whether you like it or not, for sure. Uh, a lot of articles talking about how hard it was going to be as that fund gained so many dollars under management because unlike other hedge funds where they can only file maybe every 90 days past the quarterly number, she has to announce on a daily basis when she's buying and selling. And many times the funds, when you're dealing with that level of money, very astute investors can either figure out when you're building a position, when you're selling a position off, they can front lead you. It becomes very difficult to manage that much money, especially when you have to update your positions almost on a daily basis. Basis Now, last night, 288,000 shares. It sounds like a substantial amount of shares. I think it's like $25 million or something like that she put into it. Uh, that trade already down 12 bucks per share. So you're talking about, what is that, a $3 million loss, that or thereabouts? Well, put everything in context, folks. All she's doing is adding to her position of 7.1 million shares. So she bought 288,000. She's dollar cost averaging down because it's a tough position and she believes in the company. And uh, whether you like it or not, she has conviction in some of those buys, whether it's Tesla, right? Whether it's uh, Zillow, for instance. I mean, look at Tesla. She took some serious heat in Tesla this year. You look at the year we've had, Tesla started off at 722, made it up to 900, and at one point it was under 600. I mean, skipping around 600 for the better part of four or five months almost before Tesla skyrockets to 1189. Uh, nonetheless, she's dollar cost averaging down, but already that trade suffering a $3 million loss uh, as it opens down 14.9%. It's not stopping, folks. Watch out for Zillow. Uh, and as Kevin said, you know, just a complete blunder in management. And uh, they obviously did not do their due diligence to make sure that the computer AI program that they were using to buy and sell houses was working properly. Uh, and you're talking about billions of dollars here in a big way. Now, Zillow, you pull up the Analyze Fundamental tab for a company like Zillow, we're talking about an $18.8 .8 billion company at this price tag. Well, I just said we were at 208, folks. All right, you're almost one third the size of the company that you were at 208. That means what we at 1836 54. You were about a $54 billion company at the highs earlier this year. You're now an $18 billion company. You've lost $36 billion in market capitalization. Part of the reason for this acceleration was that home buying though. Okay. So maybe you, you call it, you take that out because it was not real. It was not going as well as indicated in the first quarter of this year when they came out with their numbers. Uh, but nonetheless, you still got cut in half from where we traded for the better part of January all the way through April. We're trading at 73 bucks, and next stop might be February. We're talking about 60 bucks in Zillow. That's only 20% where we're below right now, and you're down 16% today. Let's take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond, see how they're opening up. Up 36%, giving back some of the gains, though. Yeah. We trade up to 32, we're back to 22. Checking out some of the other stocks that have been a little crazy this week. How about Avis? Avis, car, up to 545 yesterday. We end the day at about 350. We're down 11% right now, still trading at $318 for Avis shares, symbol car. All right, jumping around what other stocks we have moving this morning. In terms of stories, let's take out the private payrolls before we jump around as well. Uh, 571,000 added in October on jump in hospitality, hires topping estimates. The market was looking for 395, so you're talking about almost 200,000 extra jobs. Leisure and hospitality, as to be expected, led the way, 185,000 new positions. Large businesses were by far the biggest creators. Not sure if that's a good indication for our economy overall, folks. And I say that because there's a lot of small businesses that were hit the hardest during the pandemic. Those were the ones we would hope in that through stimulus, you keep the key in the door. You're able to turn that key. When things come back, you open it back up. Large businesses did fairly well during the pandemic, right? They were able to adapt. They were able to gain access to uh, capital, uh, grow their online business, invest in online retail large businesses adding 458,000. That would be in small businesses or medium-sized businesses. You're only talking about an add of 113,000 jobs in there. Uh, that's a little dicey when you look at the implications of that. 
Professional and business services, 88,000. Trade, transportation, utilities, 78. Education and health, up 56. On the goods purchasing side, which added 113,000. You had construction, up 54. And manufacturing contributed, 53. Businesses with more than 500,000 employees, 342,000. Fewer than 50 workers, there's your 115. And medium at 114. Uh, yeah, and that is ahead of the non-farm payroll number on Friday. The market will be looking for 450,000 on Friday morning. Okay, let's jump down the line to some of the other stocks uh, that we have moving today. We talked about CVS, Humana. They are moving today in a big way. H-U-M is their symbol. Check it out. Humana, they're talking about it. The Dan, ooh, it was down. No, we are positive. Look at that, folks. Down to 423. Whatever they're talking about on that conference call in the last 35 minutes since I've been on the air, accelerating higher. Humana actually positive. Now, their numbers, adjusted early, uh, quarterly earnings, 43. They beat 466. Revenue beat the street forecast on the strength of Humana's Medicare Advantage business. Nonetheless, something was in there that sent it lower but they repaired that damage on the open. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line. We have some Norwegian in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. If you'd like to try it out, check it out on the newsletter tab at TFNN. Uh, disappointing on their numbers, though, down 3.6%, down to 25.83 after trading higher earlier this week on Norwegian. Now, Norwegian, they had to say... Uh, Wider than expected loss, revenue fell short of analyst estimates. It did expect positive cash flow in the first quarter of 2022 and expects to be profitable in the second half of the year as they are trying to build their turnaround. Now, if you want to see what we're looking at here, folks, why we are in this uh, in my newsletter, you know, you got to set your stops in these travel stocks, folks. We got to stop and it's not too far away from where we got into this thing in the last few weeks. OK, uh, I think right now we're still barely above where we got into it, uh, but we're looking at a long term trend line. This is a weekly on Norwegian skipping across the bottom of that line right now. We've been in that channel remarkably over the last year and nine months. You're talking about basically since the covid lows, we've traded to the upper boundary a couple times. We're skipping across the lower boundary line right now at twenty five ninety two. Not what you wanted to see on their numbers, though, disappointing a little bit as uh, the recovery. Still a bit ways off, it looks like, for Norwegian. We'll jump around to some of the other cruise ships right now. You got Carnival down about a percent. We'll jump to some of the other airlines. Delta right now down marginally. You got all the markets barely in the red right now. Uh, jumping to one of the other stocks in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, Uber. A little bit of a pullback in Uber, but Lyft out with their numbers last night. Uber out with their numbers tomorrow. There you see the impact on Uber and Lyft coming out and beating in a big way and they're up 11.8 percent look at that it looks like uh potentially airport rides picking up travel business travel potentially picking up travel picking up across the board uh and lyft seeing a lift of about 12 percent on their numbers uber with a little bit of a rise as well stay tuned folks we'll be back with our man teddy kegstat talking a little forex talking a little commodities talking a little crude be right back are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Take a look at crude. Crude right now pulling back about $2.40. Quite a run we've had, though. You back it up just to August, folks. We were trading at 60, 61. What is the low there? 61.74 up to 85 bucks. Backing off a bit. We're going to talk a little crude. We're going to talk a little Forex. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got uh, a lot on the agenda today, Teddy. Of course, we just got the private payrolls this morning. Pretty decent number. Uh, we all know it's Fed Day. Uh, expectations pretty solid in terms of what's going to be happening with a little tapering going on in terms of the assets. Uh, rates staying the same as the expectation. We find out at 2 o'clock, press conference at 2.30, and we got a little bit of a pullback in crude this morning. Uh, what are you looking at first in this market, Teddy, in terms of whether you're talking Forex, commodities, and, and Fed Day? Uh, well, today it's Fed Day, so always right now, it's pretty much a sleepy day. After this, I'll be running some errands and stuff like that and then going by nice. the FIA Expo uh, downtown because it's going to be a dead day. Now, does that pick up, you think, after the Fed announcement or? I'm sorry, yeah. what did you say? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Nice. I think we're just I think we're just waiting on 115. And then after this afternoon, once the evening markets open up again, uh, that <clears throat> we're going to have the currencies free flowing again. We're going sideways right now. I mean, you got the U.S. dollar yen is looking to still break out to uh, challenge resistance, but it's kind of just sleepy, creepy right now because of the Fed day. Um, I think with oil pulling back slightly a little bit today and bonds being kind of mixed, it's, it's a Fed day. It's going to be a choppy sideways day. I'll be used a lot of caution, but. Overall, I'm still bullish the U.S. dollar yen. I'm looking for a breakout to the upside now. And uh, again, I think 116 is really, really viable by the end of the month. Uh, and 122, I think, is on the table still for the U.S. dollar yen um, by the end of uh, December, um, end of January. You know, but right now today, it's a sleepy Fed day. You know, I mean, I, I would watch the oil numbers. I think that the pullback right now is just a short term little little profit taking move. I think that you got the oil numbers today and after that. Within the next couple of days, we'll see oil probably bucking up against resistance again. And that's the thing that's going to help drive, like, I think the U.S. dollar yen trade and stuff. But as, as, as a whole, the currencies, if you're trading the Forex markets today, it's a sloppy trade. I mean, everything is kind of like, I mean, the dollar index, is, is if you're using that as a gauge, is not a good gauge because that's showing dollar strength. But it's really mixed across the board. You know, you have a weaker euro U.S. dollar right now. You have a little bit of strength in the pound U.S. dollar. You have a little bit of indecision in the U.S. dollar Swiss, you know. So unless you're working a position already, I would say wait for a signal in most of these markets until we get the Fed, Fed day is over, actually. That's what we need to do. And let's just assume that 
Chairman Powell comes out and, and basically says what's expected, and I'm sure he's going to have some words in terms of how he's balancing the tapering versus no rate rises anytime in the future. Those are all the expectations. Um, are there any markets that you see potentially getting the most volatility out of Chairman's uh, press conference this afternoon? Or how does that usually play out in the Forex markets of what will be hit the most? I know the dollar, of course, um, but versus the other cross rates in that market. Okay. Well, what, the way I see it is, I agree with what you just said. I think that there's going to be nothing new as far as what the Fed is going to do today, as far as what they're going to say. <clears throat> Obviously, the tapering and what have you is on the table. So after today, though, I think that the market's not going to like what the Fed is doing, you know, So, because it's more of the same. The fact that we can guess pretty much what the Fed is doing every meeting it doesn't say a lot for as the Fed's influence on the markets. And I think what you're going to see after today is like right now you see a little bit of a pullback in the in the 30 year and the 10 year, a little bit of strength, but it's really indecision. And I think you're setting yourself up for a head fake, especially as we come into uh, the oil numbers, the unemployment numbers uh, claims tomorrow after the uh, <clears throat> and also unemployment on Friday. So I think between this afternoon and Friday morning, you're going to see a head fake in the bonds in the 10 year and start to see them slam lows again and start trending lower. That I think will give a lift to the dollar, which will help with the US dollar yen trade, reinforce that as well as if oil, unless there's a big sell off in oil, you know, but I'm looking for a break in the interest rate market after this, meaning higher rates and giving a lift to the dollar versus a lot of the currencies. So especially versus the euro right now, that it's just it's really struggling right now. I don't see very much any chance of seeing any real strength right now. I mean, short term, we got a sell signal on the hourly basis, but even on the daily basis, the trend is kind of your friend. I would sure. use cautious with the pound, the pound US dollar, even though it's hitting these lows, it, it could bounce back like a balloon underwater, <clears throat> you know? So, but yeah, I think really what we're gonna see right now is that after today, We'll see how the oil numbers and based in mostly unemployment, how that impacts things. And if the bonds don't like that and that really sells off, I think it's going to be hard to beat the dollar bulls, you know. So, I, But I would be, use caution watching the dollar index for any <clears throat> currency cross as far as dollar strength. Look at the interest rate markets and the oil markets for clarity. I like that wrap up, man. I agree with a lot of it. I do. Uh, crude oil. So just jump into it. And I referenced it briefly before talking to you, man. Um, and the, t the the pullback today does look substantial. You're down 2.6% right now. I got light sweet crude at 81.72. Uh, but just for some context, I have a chart up here, Teddy, on a daily basis, just going back to August. And it's mm -hmm. basically no pullback. You know, from $62 up to 85 even if you're dealing with a 382 retracement, it'd be 76 bucks. Mm -hmm. A 50% would be 73 um, A lot of strength in that market. And of course, you're going to get some negative days in there. And really, that seems to be based off just a little bit of risk variables in there in terms of maybe something comes out. I was reading one thing this morning. Maybe the U.S. taps their reserves or something like that. But as we all know, um, the market forces in that crude market, man, are much bigger than uh, the U.S. tapping their reserves to kind of quell what's going on across the board. It seems like, Teddy, you know, I run into I was in Publix the other day, right? They didn't have one thing I liked. Everybody whether it's the, the butcher in Publix, right, to the cashier, is talking about supply shortages, man, which is pretty remarkable in terms of just what's going on in the economy and that we just can't keep up right now, it seems like. Is that, how are you feeling out just in your no, oh. normal day life in Chicago? Absolutely, what you said right there, you know, I've been watching, I'm a Costco customer, okay? Nice. And over the past year, I've noticed how, you know, they used to have a lot of everything. Now they have a lot of staples, you know, consumer staples, like everything from toothpaste to things like that. But when you start looking at the food, actually, there's a lot of things that they don't carry anymore that they used to, or they're really starting to cut back on supply. Like I remember, like, for instance, the salmon, the little cut little squares and these little packets that they sell at every Costco, okay, in that little one freezer thing, it would be a huge end cap, right? Now you yes. have two little boxes if you're lucky, and you're lucky if you can get those. And this is at multiple Costco stores because I, depending sure. on when I'm traveling in Chicagoland, I'll stop at one on the way home or whatever, you know. And this is not just reflective of one; this is multiple ones. So if that's any indication of what Costco is doing, and they're a big buyer, you know, 
And I think that this is really starting to, and no one can deny that there's shortages out there, that things are disappearing. And I think that besides the fact that the cost of things is going up, people are starting to wonder like, am I gonna be able to still buy this product that I like six months from now, let alone three months from I now? Agree, you know? and those I agree, man, I agree. And that, that contributes to everything in Costco, man. Quite a charge for Costco, man. They just, they can't time, sell enough right now. Know? Talk about just making 502, remarkable. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the conversation. As always, right man, we look forward to having you on next week. And uh, you have a great week, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Oh, he's cutting out a little okay. bit. Thanks, Folks, Tom. check out Teddy's website. Thanks, Teddy, man. Take care. I appreciate it. Take care. Check out his website, folks, forex-trading-unlock.com. I always love that conversation. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by just five right now. NASDAQ 100 in the positive by 14. We jump over to Tesla. Let's check out some of the NASDAQ stocks, adding 1.7%. Remarkable, the Tesla just sitting right near 1,200 bucks. Crazy action. Amazon, a little bit of a pullback this week, down to 3,300 after their earnings missed last week. We jump over to Apple. Apple shares rebounding nicely. I mean, remarkable, folks. If you think about going into last Thursday, right, if you said uh, – 
think about the fact that potentially you're going to have two of the biggest companies in the world miss in terms of Apple and Amazon. There's where we ended Thursday trading. Apple and Amazon come out with their numbers. We trade down to about 15,650. Folks, we're up 250 points from where we were trading prior to Apple and Amazon. Now, one company that's putting a lift in that in a big way check out microsoft man microsoft since last thursday is up from 323 to 333 adding almost three percent we make another high on microsoft all-time high it is this morning we jump over to google shares google trading at 29.20 we jump to social media facebook or meta as they like to be called up about half a percent this is going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out folks the metaverse it is coming and it's crazy that it is right virtual reality it will be the future to some degree the amount of capital it's going to take is just going to be substantial and then the next thing out there is thinking about how a company like facebook might be trusted in that arena because when you're in vr there was a story yesterday that talked about facebook has almost like a type of skin a suit that you could wear, like a skin to put on your body, to increase sensitivity, to really have an immersive VR system. And I was joking with my friends, who's ready to wrap their body in a Facebook suit? Not me, folks. Not me at all. Uh, Apple, for instance, and listen, there's the haters out there for Apple, there's the fanboys. But you talk about trusting of personal data. Apple leaps and bounds ahead of a company like Facebook. And when you start talking about wrapping yourself in a skin, like a bodysuit, and that Facebook's going to be basically monitoring every part of that, they have some hurdles to get over. And that's why they're changing their name, folks. So we'll see. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in, starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man, Basil Chapman. Thanks for Basil filling in yesterday. We got our man, Larry, coming up at 11. And guess what, folks? Larry, he's got a live trading webinar coming up one week from today. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN. He's going to be launching it at 11 o'clock today, folks. It's already up there. Live trading with Mr. President one week from today, November 10th. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday.